a quick video of how I do shading. I already kind of started on this one. Um, this is just the line art is on one layer, flat colors are on another, I have markings separate. That's just how I do it. Um, since this is kind of a dark colored one, I'm going to go ahead and turn the colors off because it makes it hard to see different shading uh, gradients and things like that. Um, I already kind of started here. I have a brush that is the closest thing to the Psy uh, water brush as I can create. Um, I've downloaded a couple. It's a uh, modified one of one I downloaded off the Procreate forums. Um, but it should work if you're using Psy uh, as well. Um, so basically what I do to shade, uh, I create a uh, multiply layer uh, and just completely fill it with, like, I use this color here, um, like a dark purple. Uh, generally cooler colors are better, so like blues or purples, um, but you could use whatever you want. Um, you set it to multiply so the colors underneath will show through, and then I actually use the eraser to do most of the shading. Uh, I just kind of erase away, and I'll add it back as it needs, uh, as I need to, but um, like right here, I try to do the parts that are in the forefront the most, because then like these little pieces here, um, I can go back and paint those back in if I need to. Uh, so the ones that are more towards the front are the best ones to start with. Uh, stuff that's going to be highlighted more uh, and not in shadow. And I have a bit of a cold right now, so my nose is kind of running. I'm sorry. So that, and then I take the brush, a little smaller, and kind of just paint back in some texture on the fur. So it looks like actual fur. And you want to kind of go, you want to always go with your line art, like there, I had it going kind of crossways, but you want it to kind of blend and go with your line art more, uh, in the direction of your, of your shading, because it always ends up looking a lot more cohesive and natural that way, as opposed to kind of sticking out and looking irregular. And I use a, a brush with fairly hard edges, like you can see here. Um, it's got a pretty hard edge to it. If I paint softer, it's, it blends it a little bit more. Um, but it's better than using like a, you know, like an airbrush. It's like the big soft brush. A lot of people use these when they first start shading. And um, it just, it just looks fake almost, you know, like you can shade this area light, but it, it creates like too soft of an effect, you know. And it doesn't create that nice texture. and kind of gives it a little bit of that fur-like look. If you zoom out a little bit, you can see it looks more like fur. Let me just undo that real quick. Um, so here, oh, let's change the brush back. That's probably a good idea. So you want to always like know what your light source is and figure out where your light's coming from. This is just kind of a general light source, and then I'll go in later and add more highlights and stuff. Um, areas that are more to the forefront are going to pop out more and you'll erase more of that shading. You can also do it like you can paint in the shading as opposed to how I'm doing it by erasing away, but I just find it's a lot easier to find to identify the areas that are going to be catching the light more as opposed to painting in where the shadows will be. It just feels more natural to me, but again, that's going to just depend on your preference. And I have my, I have the Apple Pencil, and I have it to where the tilt settings determine the size, like this is on its side, and then this is just perpendicular to the screen. So it helps if you can make a setting like that with your tablet pen to where you can, you can do, you know, detail work on like muscles and things like that, and you can also go in and shade like broad areas like his pecs right here. Um, I try to avoid using the smudge tool as much as possible because kind of like the airbrush, it gives that fake like pillow shading kind of effect, and I, I just don't like it. Um, it's just personal preference. I just don't like it. But sometimes on big flat areas like this where I, I don't want as many of those little lines and those textures, I will go in a little bit and smooth that out 
just a little bit, not too much. Just to make it look a little bit more natural. Because, they, you know, if the fur right there is going to be really short and not, not have a lot of texture to it. That sucks. My internet sucks at home. I'm actually using it tethered to my iPhone at the moment because my internet got shut off because I'm broke as fuck. I'm living the high class life here. It's good times. Here's where I use a smudge brush just a little bit. Let's smooth that out. again, because these straight lines don't look very good. The face is probably the most complicated part. Um, it takes the most time just because it's important, because that's, I mean, that's the focal point of the drawing, so you want it to look the best. You want to And I start generally with the outer edges first and pieces like these, this fur piece that's going to be st kind of sticking out more um, just to give it that texture and again it's, you can go back and add in little bits of shading to give it more more depth but anyway just so we don't do this whole entire thing um, I'll show you what it looks like with the colors back on looks pretty good just this area right here, at least. Um, for highlights, I make another layer um, and do add. You could do like luminosity on side or a soft light, whatever you want. Whatever you want to use. Um, generally, I pick a warm color, um, like a yellow, orange, pink, kind of warm pinks uh, look good. Fairly light, but just a little bit of color to it, so it looks uh, so it looks kind of natural. Uh, I need to get a new palette. And I'll just highlight where the fur, and I'll generally use a thinner brush for this. Highlight where the fur is. I'm gonna catch the light more. In little, little strokes. Just to show like the individual strands of fur. And then I'll kind of go over larger areas like his shoulder here to kind of show that softness. And I use the smudge brush, brush a little bit more on a, on the highlights. And the undo button is your friend. If you don't like the way a certain stroke looks, don't keep fucking with it. Just just redo it. It's It'll save you time in the long run. And then something you can also do that I like to do, um, if you go to your shading layer, back to your shading layer, um, you turn off the markings again. You take a hard brush, um, like this one, this is just like a really hard brush, and go at a small size and kind of give it bounce lighting, which is lighting that's not from, like my main source is to the top left, but there's gonna, but a secondary source can add so much depth to your drawing, um, to your art piece thing. Um, and that's just basically on the back side of the darkest part of the shadow is the other direction. You'll have a little bit of light coming from there. And it can just add a lot to the to the drawing. I like to add a lot of bounce lighting. Um, make sure you kind of smooth out the edges though. So it's not super rough. See that just adds like a little bit of definition there. Um, you can smudge the edges if you if you like the way that looks a little bit more, a little softer. And 
a little bit softer like that. Um, and that's about it, uh, just at least for this like shoulder area here. Um, kind of gives you an idea of what I do. I also add, I love filters, it's a problem. Um, <laughs> so a lot of times I like to add a noise layer, which just fill the entire thing. Add noise to about like eh, 30 or 40 percent, and then change it to, uh, I like soft light. And you don't want it that strong because that's crazy. But if you lower the opacity opacity down to like 20 or 30, it gives it a nice bit of just just that diffuse scattering of pixels. It just, I don't really know how to explain it, but it just makes it look nicer. I like it. It makes it look more finished. Um, you can also add on an overlay, which kind of intensifies whatever color is below it. I like to add warm like yellow orange kind of lighting with one of those giant airbrushes that I said I hate um on a like to over over everything you can add a uh just kind of a soft lighting showing that 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 light is kind of like if it's from the sun or whatever it's kind of warmer um and then on the opposite side you can add a cooler color, like a dark purple. And that's not very noticeable because he's a pretty dark guy anyway. But that adds, I'm just gonna invert that. And this giant brush here. I made this for my boyfriend. It's called Wibble. Um, it's just a giant flat brush. I'm going to erase away that from the background, and you see how that gives it kind of a nice, again, it just has more depth, more interest. Um, I usually lower it down a little bit, but see, without these two things, it looks kind of flat, um, and, and the color that you make these, I mean, like this pink, it really, it tints the image a certain way. If you add a if you use a different color, um, you can change it. You see how it changes the whole tone of the image. So if you want it to be more cohesive with like a background color or something, um, that's a good way to do that. And see that overlay just adds that bit of depth that I really like. So this shoulder at least is done. Um, uh, if you have any questions, let me know, I guess. Thanks. Bye.